once you have um, given the exposure order from the computer you will see that if the person before you uh, did not reset the machine you will have the image of the previous radiograph showing in here now with this you cannot do anything you cannot reset the machine you cannot raise it up lower it down so what you need to do is that you need to click on this small triangle over here so this message will come which is the uh, 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 an image tells you uh, a message sorry that should tell you the that you have to reset the machine then you are going to click on the on the reset button now the the screen is reset but the position of the x-ray machine is not reset yet so you have to click reset again mm -hmm. and this will bring the machine back into its zero position actually this has to be done after exposure after each exposure or the person who's coming to uh, to to do take an exposure afterwards has to do all these uh, things please wait and then you see that if you do not initiate an exposure from the computer you will end up with this message is that a message that tells you switch sidexes which is the software system to ready for exposure state this means that you cannot do any exposure unless you actually activate the side axis of the MyPack system so that you will have the ready to exposure message which uh, enables you to export. Omar is our patient and he needs an OPG. Before we start doing any OPG for any patient, first of all, if you're working in this hospital or any other hospital, make sure that the patient has no x-ray done before or recent one, because we don't want to expose our patients so frequently to x-rays and then we discover that he has already a recent exposure. So you have to go with your log, x-ray exposure log and find if there is any um, exposure that has been done. Asking the patient, sometimes the patients know what x-ray has been done and, um, and sometimes they don't, so they think any exposure is an x-ray. In this case, uh, you better make sure that no previous x-ray is there so that we don't repeat uh, things that are not really needed. Any patient should, uh, that after just verifying that there is no recent x-ray, earrings, uh, hairpins, caps, uh, hair ties, and the shader uh, should be removed. This is uh, particularly a sensitive issue so that um, females should be actually inside the room and make sure that the door is closed. Why the shader is removed? We think that this is a soft cloth, soft piece of cloth, actually because it's, some of them are really thick and others have plastic beads that will just prevent or interfere with the x-ray passage and they will show on the image and then we need to repeat all over again. For men, even the uh, head cap uh, and the rotor, what is known as the rotor or head cover, should also be removed and make sure that they are ha uh, uh, placed away. For, uh, for ladies, make sure that if they have earrings or nose rings or necklaces which are gold or expensive, they should be kept safely with the patient. Uh, uh, we don't want instances of lost things uh, within the x-ray or when the x-ray is taken. Now, for Omar here, uh, can you Omar please remove your eyeglasses? Okay, eyeglasses should be taken. You can place them anywhere here. It's away from the radiation, or you can place it anywhere in the in, uh, in the room. This is one. Second, we ask the patient if he's, if he's wearing any removable intraoral prosthodontics, uh, prosthesis, sorry, like uh, uh, a removable partial denture, complete denture. Even when it is made of acrylic, it will show on the radio bar. So check with the patient if, that, if he's wearing anything. Make sure that you give him a piece of tissue where he can 
put the denture away. Okay? Otherwise, things who cannot, which cannot be removed, like the orthodontic appliances, the uh, braces, wires, bridges, these, these appliances which are fixed, they cannot be removed, then they are kept. The next thing, we need to protect our patient from radiation, and this is done by placing the lead apron. And lead apron is, as you know, it is a heavy uh, piece of uh, uh, cover, because this is made of plasticized lead, about 0.25 millimeter, so it should be heavy, just to put this on and make sure that they are, uh, 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 it's in place. This will provide cover, coverage from the shoulders down to below the knees. Next thing is we are going to position the patient. Now, so, so far, we have to take care of the following. Do not place the lead apron position the patient inside the x-ray machine and then give the exposure order. No. This, I mean, placement of the patient or positioning of the patient inside the x-ray machine should be the last step to be done. We don't want to keep the patient waiting in an uncomfortable position and then we discover that we did not start the machine. Now, we will come to the how to position the patient. You just put your gloves on, on a clean hand. And then you grab one of these uh, syringe covers. These, by the way, the patient is going to bite here. Uh, they are autoclavable, or that you can just put a cover. We um, uh, uh, covers are easier, uh, and it, it saves time of the autoclave. What you do is that just you pick it up. Make sure you don't touch anything except this. Okay, and then just completely cover it up to the end. Now the patient is going to bite on this uh, uh, on this part. Uh, so next thing is we're going to bring our patient to the uh, to to be positioned. One thing need to be uh, uh, said here is that patients usually do not know how to stand. So or where to, how to behave inside the uh, x-ray machine. So you need to guide your patient and tell him exactly what you're do, going to do. What we need to do is that before we just let the patient in, we need to estimate or approximate the, uh, the uh, bite block with the patient's height, according to the patient's height. So for Omar, I think I just need this is okay. Of course, you can raise it up by clicking on these two arrows, the one up, you click, it goes slow, and then it moves, it moves faster, and then you can bring it down with this uh, uh, sound. It means that something is moving, you need to take care of. Okay, Emma, I want you to step forward. Now, you see this yellow notch over here? I just want you to, just like, bite with your teeth in the notch, okay? Just move forward with your, no, this is too much blood. Yes, perfect. Now you can see that the teeth are biting actually in the groove. And this is very important because we're going to talk or we will discuss later on what happens if you b b bite before or after this notch. Now the, you see this machine is a bit high for, uh, for the patient's height. So I need to bring it down, and there is a rule about this. See, when I bring it down, I need the Frankfurt plane of the patient, which is extending from the inferior bony margin over here to the external auditory meter, meatus. It should be parallel to the floor. This is one. I will ask the patient to hold from this side and hold from the other side, and I will ask the patient to move the head, the, uh, the feet forward. This will bring the shoulders down. Bringing the shoulders down is very important because I, want to, I do not want the slumping position of the patient. The shoulders need to be brought down as much as they, uh, uh, they, uh, you can. The other thing is that you need to check the clearance between the film carriage and the shoulders of the patient. I, 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 must, make assure, I must assure that they be sure that the 
the uh, the, the machine, machine when it rotates, they will, it will not hit the patient's shoulders during rotation. The next step, after the patient is there, I will just click on this posi positioning light. You will see that the positioning light, there are two lights, one which is uh, uh, which represents the Frankfurt plane, this is parallel to the floor and it should coincide with the patient's Frankfurt plane. Now, if you put this, see that the Frankfurt plane of the patient is not coincident with that of the machine. And now here, it's too much down. We don't want it too much down, we just want it parallel to the floor. See? This is the first one, which controls the up and, word, uh, up and down movement of the patient. The other line, which is another important line, is the mid-sagittal plane of the patient. To check for the, for the mid-sagittal plane, you can just flip this mirror to either side, right and left, and you look. See, the mid-sagittal plane of the machine now is not coinciding with the mid-sagittal plane of the patient. This I need to... Uh, am I open, please? Put your head to the left. Now, can you? No. Have a look here, Omar. Mm -hmm. See this line? I want it to be just exactly in the middle. So move your. Uh huh. Perfect. The patient can help you on this. So I need now the light will go in 30 seconds. I will just activate it again, as you can see in here. Now the mid-sagittal plane of the patient is coinciding with the mid-sagittal plane uh, of the uh, of the machine, and Frankfurt plane is. Uh, parallel to the floor. Next thing, after this is assured, I will close the uh, temple support from this button over here by just clicking on the temple support. It will be closed. Just make it touching with the patient's head. This will prevent the patient's head moving to either side. You can further uh, uh, fix the patient by clicking on the uh, on the uh, frontal support uh, and then uh, now the patient now is ready for exposure frankfurt plane mid sagittal plane he is biting the notch can you just open the lip to the hour yeah see he is biting exactly in the notch no forward no backward to the notch and he's supported he's been informed now not to move now you'll step back forwards and just again repeat or ask the patient not to move during the exposure. After the exposure is done, I will just put it here in the T position. Okay, we will do the exposure, see how it will, it will rotate. Ask the patient not to move. Now there will be a full circle over here. Of course, we're doing the T uh, mode here, so you don't hear the exposure. After the cycle is, moved, uh, is completed, the patient is, now it's done, I have washed my patient, now it will go to the zero position. This is the time I will lift my finger from the exposure. Now, the thing here is don't ask the patient to go back, you just support your patient. I'm going to get back please, open, and then you slide him and guide him out of the, uh, of the machine. Next thing is you're going to remove the uh, lead up one and a, a very important thing please keep the lead up one in this position lead up one don't put it in this position this the, the, the lead will crack and then you're going to remove the uh, sleeve with your uh, gloves and then just discard them as an infected material